الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى says in his glorious book in سورة البقرة that's chapter 2 in verse 124 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين and mention O Muhammad when Abraham was tried by his Lord with words i.e. with commands and he fulfilled them and Allah says indeed I will make you a leader for the people and Abraham said and of my descendants Allah said my covenant does not include the wrongdoers now it's we are in the days of of Eid and the days of Dhul Hijjah and it's hard to you know not think about what Al Hajj and all this stuff how it points to our beloved Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and what good example that Allah says him and, and his family were a good example to follow many rituals in Hajj honor you know this family and honor what they what they went through so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is telling us that he tested Sayyidina Ibrahim with many with many tests and Sayyidina Ibrahim completed all of them perfectly and the way that Allah expect a believer to do that and in in that way he is an example for us complete submission to Allah is how you summarize Prophet Ibrahim's life no matter how tough the test was he performed it, did not complain, and performed it completely. That's why Allah says, I will make you an imam. I will make you an example to all believers to follow. So this, our status with Allah is not by words that we say. It's by actions that we do in this life. Do you fulfill your covenant with Allah, or you do just say it with words. There's a difference. So if we look at one of the incidents from Prophet Ibrahim's life, he was ordered to take his wife Hajar and his baby son Ismail, he was ordered to take them and leave them where Mecca is today. Now at the time, it was a barren valley. There, it was a just there was nothing there. No water, no vegetation, nothing. So, you know, that's the area where, where Zamzam is in Mecca. So he went over, took his family, let them, you know, put them in where Zamzam is today, gave them a little bit of water, a little bit of dates, turned around and started heading out. It's, it's hard, it's hard to, to recall this, this, this story without being emotional as a father. As a father, you're taking your, your, your beloved newborn son and your wife, and Allah says, take them and leave them in the desert and, and don't look back. So he started leaving and, and Sayyidah say Hajar started following him. Where are you leaving us? There's nothing here. There's no food. There's no water. Why are you leaving? And he wouldn't say anything. And she kept repeating. And finally she said, Did Allah tell you, command you, to leave us there? And he said, yes. And that's what a believing wife looks like. She said, Then Allah will not let us go to waste. Will not destroy us. And Allah لن يضيعنا. That's, the, that's the, the faith of a believing woman. So she went back and, and sat with, with, with Ismail and you know, started eating the dates and, and drinking the water and breastfeeding him until everything ran out. In the meantime, Sayyidina Ibrahim, once he was far away from them, he, he got to a point where he, they couldn't see him. He turned back. He faced, his, he faced where Kaaba is today. And he made the supplication that Allah narrated in Surah Ibrahim, in chapter 14, verse 37. He said, رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ 
عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون O oh Lord, I have settled some of my descendants in an uncultivated valley near your sacred house. Our Lord, that they may establish prayer. So make hearts among the people inclined towards them and provide for them from the fruits that they may, might be grateful. So in the meantime, Sayyidah Hajar ate the, the dates, finished the water, breastfed Ismail, and then the... The food ran out, and Ismail was hungry, and without drinking, there was no milk. So he started crying, so she couldn't stand, you know, to, to see him suffer. So she ran to, the, there are two hills, Safa and Marwa, and people who make Hajj, they, they follow these rituals. So she ran to the, to, the, to the Safa, climbed up, looked around, is there anyone that, that can help us? Is there any, any sign of any type of water or anything? Didn't see anything. She went down, and then she started hearing her son cry, so she started jogging. And that's why when you do sa'i between Safa and Marwa, you speed up in the middle, and then you slow down again. So she went to the other hill, Al Marwa. Looked around, nothing, there's nothing. And she did that seven times, going back and forth, back and forth. She was afraid her son was gonna die, and they were gonna die without food and water. So on the seventh time when she was on Al Marwa, she heard the voice. So she shushed himself, herself. It was like, shh, shh, shh. you know, like she wanted to hear what, what was that sound. And when she looked, she saw an angel standing by, by Ismail. And he dug with his, with his wing, and water was bubbling up. La ilaha illallah. When Allah promises that if you obey him, he will not let you die. He will not let you be destroyed, not let your work go to waste. That's, that's the implementation of it. So the, the angel dug the zamzam water and the water started bubbling up. So say the Hajar started gathering, you know, making a pool to grab the water and, and drinking. And, you know, and, and then a bird started circling and a caravan saw the birds, like, there is no water here. Why are those birds circling? And that was the story of how Mecca was inhabited. Now, it, it is very easy to look back on that, on that story. And yeah, we know he, they were left in the desert and Allah saved them. But at the time when you're being tested like that, they didn't know. Sayyidina Ibrahim did not know. They did not know what was going to happen. But they had a direct command. Sayyidina Ibrahim had a direct command from Allah that you take your family and leave them there. Don't worry about it. And Sayyidina Hajar realized that that was an order from Allah, so she complied. That was the submission, the example of submission of a believer. If the command is clear, you do it. Let Allah take care of the rest. Because if you are... Uh, you know, following exact commands from Allah, Allah will never let you go to waste. You may have some difficulties, but you'll never be destroyed. So these, that's some of the lessons that we learned from this, you know, from, from this story. And the angel, when he was talking to Sayyidah Hajar, he told her that, don't worry, you will not perish. This is the place where this son, this child, and his father will build the house of Allah. So don't worry that Allah never lets his close servants perish. Ahlahu. The, the term in, in Arabic, Ahlahu, like your family, like your Allah's family. If you're that close to Allah, he will never let you perish. He will not let you go, go to waste. So that's some of the lessons that we take from, from this beautiful family is follow Allah's commands and don't worry. Don't worry even if the entire planet wants to destroy you, want to oppose you, and you are on the side of right, don't care about them. Care about Allah, what Allah says, what Allah wants from you, and everybody else, ignore them. They are powerless. All the power belongs to Allah. And if you are with Him, 
Nobody who can defeat you if, if Allah is with you. And if Allah abandons you, good luck. There's no army on earth that's going to protect you. So Allah Taala will never abandon us if we obey Him. That's, that's the lesson that we have to keep hammering with us. We, you do the right thing no matter what the consequence is. I cannot find a job except working as a bartender. No, starve. Allah wants to test you, wants to see how serious you are. And, Allah, and alhamdulillah, he doesn't test us like he tested Ibrahim, Sayyidina Ibrahim and, and his family. Like, you know, any one of us will, will, will pass the test, go slaughter your son. He's asking us much less than that, and many of us fail. May Allah help us obey him and help us do what, what is right. So we must be sincere and put the effort to know Allah, to cut, come close to him, and to obey him so we have success and his protection in this life.